stream. We're glad you're with us. Praying that the Lord will use the live stream to reach someone with the gospel. Amen. Amen. And we don't know. We've had folks from Virginia and other places that have contacted us where they've seen it. I don't know how they saw it other than God just got them there. And so we praise the Lord for that. That good that came out of all this mess that we're in. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, we're grateful and thankful for the beautiful day you've given to us, the beautiful weather. Thankful for the good service this morning. We pray uh, that your Holy Spirit would move again tonight. And we again pray for those that we mentioned this morning that are dealing with the COVID virus, others who are facing surgeries, others who uh, have other complications, flu. And uh, it's that time of the year. We just pray that you'll meet each and every one of their needs. Be with those who cannot be here with us this evening. Be with the family of this friend of Brother Roberts who uh, had this accident and passed away this week. Give them comfort and peace as only you can. And then, Father, we just ask that you will move in the service tonight. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Right. Number 35. How great thou art.
seen, ear have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of men the things that wait for us when we get to heaven. I can't wait, amen? amen. Not rushing it, nope. but I can't wait. And so don't forget now, the 24th of November, that Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, we will have our uh, bread and soup fellowship. We used to do the big catered Thanksgiving dinner, but then everybody was doing Thanksgiving two days later. So we switched it off to a, a soup and sandwich fellowship. And found out a lot of people make a lot of good soups. And so we're not going to have a, a soup contest because Miss Carolyn might win that too. But we'll have soup and sandwiches and desserts and we'll have a sign up sheet put out. And then don't forget this Tuesday, if you have not already, to vote. And uh, be sure you vote for who God tells you to vote for. Amen. Amen. All right. Turn to Acts chapter number five this evening, Acts chapter number five. Okay. And of course, it's time change, so we gain an hour of sleep, lose an hour of daylight. <clears throat> I'd rather give up the hour of sleep to keep the hour of daylight myself. Acts chapter five, we're going to be looking at verses 17 through 29 or several different verses. Um, and we're going to focus on the main, I guess, theme or the message be verse number uh, 29 at the end. We'll get there in just a minute. But the early church, if you've read the book of Acts, you've studied your Bible, you know that they came through persecution from within and from without. And nothing has changed in the church today. The church still suffers persecution from without the world all around us, uh, especially in these last days, as well as within, uh, which is sad to say, but there are a lot of uh, problems within churches today. And it ought not to be that way if the church is what God would have it to be and everybody would be what God would have them be. But in the book of Acts, uh, the church was thriving. In Acts chapter 2 and verse number 41, and we'll look at a few of these tonight, just very quickly, chapter 2, verse 41, he says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. We'd go crazy if we had 3,000 souls saved and added to our church in one day, would we not? Yes, we would. I'll, I'll just answer that for you. Yes, we would. Yes. Then if you look over in verse number 47, same chapter says, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So you got 3,000 added. Then you've got daily such as should be saved. So we don't know how many really that is. Then if you look at chapter 3 and verse number 4, it says, And Peter, fasting his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. That's not nothing to do with adding to the church, is it? No. But look at verse 14. No, what did I do? Did I write that down wrong? Mm -hmm. Chapter 3, verse 4. I wrote it down wrong. It's chapter 4, verse 4. How be it many of them which heard the word and believed, and the number of the men was added, about 5,000. Not counting women and children, just the men. And then if you look at chapter 5 and verse 14, chapter 5, verse 14, it says, And believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes, both of men and women. So the church in this day was thriving, growing. Uh, everything was going. The apostles were preaching the word of God with great power. It even tells us in chapter 4 and verse number 32. Chapter 4, verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, 
uh, but they had all things common. And so the apostles were preaching, and, and they, were, they had all things common. They are all in one accord. Uh, they were preaching with great power. Great things were happening. And, and people just, I mean, it was what church ought to be. Amen. Right. Chapter 4 and verse 13, it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, remember that word boldness, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. When was the last time someone looked at you and said, you've been with Jesus? Because of the way we witness, the way we live our lives, the way we... And so they were preaching with boldness. They were thriving. They were growing in numbers. They had everything in common. Other verses that say that they took the possessions that they had and brought them together and sold them and met the needs of other folks. And so there was growth, but there was also persecution, as there is today. Amen. Chapter 4, verse number 3 says, And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now eventide. So they're preaching with boldness, but they lay hands on them. And they gather them together, and there's persecution. And there's persecution for Christians in our world today. Uh, those that are being beheaded in the Middle East, those in our country that are being persecuted for standing up for the truth, and so tonight I want us to see some things in, the thought, in this thought, obeying God rather than man. Obeying God rather than man. Now, it may come down to something like that this next week. Because we don't know what's going to happen. We know there's an election. We know who's running. We know who stands for what. We don't know who's going to be elected. But we know that there are... Uh, is a mess in our country. Amen? Amen. And as I said this morning, our country's done everything it can to get rid of God and the Bible and prayer. And if it could get rid of the church, and it's working real hard on that as well. But Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. And so you and I are the church. Amen. Right. And so God said it's not going to prevail against us. We'll be persecuted. We'll suffer tribulation. God said that and told us that. God said the world hated him. They'll hate us. Right. But he never told us to quit, give up, run, or hide, did he? Amen. And so we find out in verse 17 and 18, number one, there was the rearrested. Chapter 5, verse number 17. Then the high priest rose up and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. Preaching of the gospel will do that to lost people. It'll fill them with indignation. Amen. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. And so they had been arrested before. They've been beaten. Now they're rearrested. Now they're put back into prison. For what? For speaking with boldness. For preaching the gospel. Uh, we know there are preachers today uh, in third world countries that have been released and brought back home for preaching the gospel. Preachers in the United States persecuted for preaching the gospel. All the apostles were displaying great courage. And you and I, as disciples of Jesus Christ, need to display great courage. We're the church, are we not? Amen. And God said the gates of hell should not prevail against the church. And so we ought to be doing the same thing. Now, you remember uh, when Jesus was arrested in Gethsemane and when he was taken, uh, all the disciples just ran away. They just fled. And sometimes I think... Uh, we, when we have a chance to witness or be bold, I think sometimes we do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We flee or run away or we avoid what God's called us to do. Here's the thing. Now, here they are in, in, in chapter 4 and verse number 13. They're preaching with boldness. Now, when they saw the boldness, these folks saw the boldness of, of Peter and John. I think in the world today, they ought to be able to see the same boldness out of you and I. We ought to be able to speak up and, and witness and testify and preach the word. And, and it says, and they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. These guys never made it to Harvard. They made it to the school of Jesus, which is a great university, by the way. Amen. Amen. And, and here's the textbook. God gave us the textbook. And there will be a test at the end. We'll stand before God and give an account, will we not? Yeah. That's going to be our test. It says they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. What a great testimony to have 
tonight that people will look at us and say, you know, there's something different about that Miss Carolyn. You can tell she's been with Jesus. Her face, her glow, her smile, she witnesses, she testifies. Miss Hurst, I know she does. Wouldn't it be great if the world looked at us, the church today, and said, man, they've been with Jesus. I don't like the ignorant and unlearned part. But that's what they think about us anyway, do they not? But, but they had, listen, they had seen the risen Savior. They walked with him and talked with him. There's a song in there. <laughs> and they watched him die and was buried. And then he rose again and they saw the resurrected Savior. And it done something to them. And they began to preach the gospel of Poland. Now, we know beforehand, Peter denied the Lord three times. Now he's preaching and 3,000 folks get saved. Something happened, did it not? Sure. Something changed. And, and, and when you see the Savior as for who he is, it'll change you. When you got saved, you ought to have been changed. Right. Bible says old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You're a new creature. And so we ought to be different. They were rearrested and they were thrown in prison. When was the last time you were thrown in prison for preaching the gospel? It may happen. It has happened. I'm glad I've got some that already promised to bail me out or join me, would you? And I promise you, if I get arrested, I'm going to learn from Paul and Silas and I'm going to go in and I'm going to sing praises and pray. Amen. Probably pray more than singing. I don't know if they prisoners will want to hear me singing. <laughs> but, but listen, uh, they deny the Sadducees doctrines. They deny the doctrines of the world of that day. And they preached Jesus. Uh, they preached the resurrection of Jesus. They didn't, those guys didn't believe in the resurrection, but they preached it. They were told not to preach it, but they preached it. Because, as we'll see in a minute, they decided it was better to serve God than to serve man. And it may get down to that for us real soon, depending on how things go in the election and in the world that we live in today. They're trying to silence the church. They've gotten rid of God. They've gotten rid of